these series of videos are videos uh, on the topic of passage planning and uh, because this is a big topic I've decided to make it in a series of uh, four or five or more than five videos this is part one in the series of videos and let me know what you guys think about it and I'll be releasing uh, the other parts very soon so let's get started with the first part of passage planning here I'll introduce you to the basics of passage planning and then I'll go deeper into it in my future so why do we require to do passage planning the first is that it is of course an IMO or a regulational requirement um, because under the STCW convention that concerns with basic principles to be observed in keeping a navigational watch uh, it specifies that the intended watch uh, as taken by the ships shall be planned in advance uh, taking into consideration all information and any course laid down shall be checked before the voyage commences. Uh, it is in the interest of the safety of the vessel and crew by minimizing the risk of navigational errors as may be expected to be encountered during the course of a voyage. It is also in the interest of your uh, professionalism as a navigator or as a mariner on the ship. The aim of uh, passage planning is to prepare for the navigation of a ship so that the intended passage can be executed from birth to birth in a safe manner uh, in respect of both the vessel and the protection of the environment as well as ensuring positive control of the vessel at all times. So the point here that you should note is that a passage plan is always made from birth to birth. All right, so from the birth of departure, right? All the way to the birth of arrival. Uh, pilotage waters is the most uh, dangerous or crucial or sensitive part of the voyage because pilotage waters has a lot of traffic there are other ships um, and then those are areas that have uh, probably a lower depth uh, it's uh, the vessel has uh, more chances of running into some kind of a collision or grounding or um, that is also an area that uh, you as mariner may not be very familiar with um, and you have to leave it to the experts the local experts who are there so it is the most sensitive part of the voyage uh, i am a resolution a285 uh, lays out that despite the duties and obligations of a pilot uh, his presence on board does not relieve the officer of the watch from their duties and obligations for the safety of the ship uh, the officer on watch should cooperate closely with the pilot and maintain an accurate check on the vessel's position as well as any kind of movement in terms of responsibility for voyage planning of course like any other thing on the ship the overall responsibility does lie with the master however it is normal for the master to delegate that responsibility to one of the navigating officers. Now, most of the times it's uh, the second officer or in some companies or in some ships, it may be the third officer as well. Uh, the navigating officer has the task of preparing the detailed passage plan to the master's requirements. And that has to be done prior to the vessel's departure. When the port is not known, which may be the cases in some ships uh, or in some kind of trades, the next port is not known or it may be altered during the voyage it will be necessary for the navigating officer to extend or amend the original plan as amended but uh, i'm sure most of you may be sailing on ships where you know the next port of call in that case of course you can uh, make the passage plan before departure although you will have to monitor it throughout the passage as we will discuss later on and make any kind of amendments as required with the approval of the master of course overall the responsible of the passage planning a voyage uh, can have three distinct phases the first one is of course the ocean passage uh, with vast seas most of the time sufficient sea room for uh, any kind of alteration of course um, and also sufficient depth of water then you may have the coastal passages which is coasting along the land uh, coasting along uh, land masses mainly and also the pilotage phase when you are actually into the coastal waters and you're also in the uh, waters of the port uh, as monitored by the port uh, that may be susceptible to uh, lesser depths uh, 
more traffic like i said all those things before so voice planning can then be broken into three major parts uh, preparation execution and archiving and documentation i'll talk about the other aspects as well i'm sure that you have heard about the appraisal stage the planning stage and all that i'll talk about all that as well but uh, it's all can be classified under these stages as well so we'll talk about that the process of preparation involves the appraisal stage and the planning stage this is most likely known to you guys as students or as mariners uh, there are very famously four stages of uh, passage planning described but here i'll start with the first two stages of appraisal and planning and then we'll talk about execution and monitoring uh, in the later stages as well all right so let's get started with the appraisal process so the appraisal process comprises of the uh, or it can be classified as the assessment stage where you basically gather all the information that you require to plan the passage and to also conduct a risk assessment and when we say risk assessment we basically mean that we anticipate we study the information that we have about the port of uh, next port and the passage that we are going to be taking and we kind of anticipate the dangers or the risks to safety of the vessel cargo ship crew that we may be facing and uh, the necessary precautions that we might have to take in that regard all right so for example if you are uh, going into uh, waters where which are known for piracy then you will know that uh, a danger to your navigation or safety of the ship will be pirates and you will have to prepare accordingly or it could be ice or it could be um, uh, shallow depths of water it could be military exercises that go on there it could be a political disturbance it could be anything all right so you gather all the information that you can from the various resources and i'll discuss the resources and then you carry out a risk assessment so all the information is gathered and an evaluation of the risk involved is made and uh, you cannot really commence real planning until an appraisal stage is conducted by the mariner in assessing the risks involved the navigator must examine collect and evaluate all available sources of information for that intended voyage in that regard i'll go deep into the details of other sources of information that are available to you as a mariner on the ships so the information sources could be starting from chart catalogs to charts to publications such as ocean passages of the world uh, then we have the pilot books uh, the sailing directions um, admiralty list of lights admiralty tide tables tidal stream atlases and many more so there are also notices to mariners that are used for the correction of charts and publications we have the admiralty list of radio signals that also includes information about the vts that is the vessel traffic services as well as pilot services uh, you also can gather a routing information from these publications uh, you can obtain radio and local warnings from maybe uh, instruments such as nav tags or your gmss equipment you also get an idea of the draft of the vessel and accordingly the load line uh, zones that your vessel will be transiting as well as uh, you may have your own personal experience or you may use the personal experience of your peers your senior officers your junior officers or other sailors or other officers who have been on this voyage they may provide you with some advice as well uh, from the navigation charts which are published by the hydrographic offices around the world and available from the chart agents you can of course plan the passage you start the passage or the planning of the passage right from the navigation charts these is of course you have the egdis available you have the electronic chart plotters so whichever is applicable to you you start planning the passages there uh, points that you have to remember when planning planning the passage is the scale of the chart to be used and the reliability of the information that you have on the charts so of course um, when you have the uh, egdis or the egdis you can change the scales at will uh, but uh, with paper charts i'll talk mainly about paper charts here because paper charts uh, have some different requirements and if you are not used to it you can learn about it then there are special carriage requirements uh, sometimes by especially by particular countries like usc and canada yes, so if you go to american or canadian waters sometimes they have some of their special requirements and you may have to become familiar with those requirements um, before you go into those waters as well make sure when we talk about reliability of charted information we also make sure that our charts and publications that we are using are corrected up to date uh, from the information received by the notices or from the notices to mariners as well as navigational warnings received from uh, gmdss equipment or navtex or similar equipment and we are very aware of the chart datum 
that is being used so that you can plan your passage accordingly. Um, how do you obtain charts? Well, of course, you have the chart catalog. Uh, now, the British Admiralty chart catalog NP131 is the uh, most common one that is used on most of the ships because uh, that provides you with most of the British Admiralty charts. But you also have the Australian 5000 or Australian 5001 for the northern and the southern part of the Australian um, Australian uh, coast. And uh, you can order charts from there as well. You get special Australian charts from there. And sometimes we have other chart catalogs uh, for ordering some special areas of charts. Uh, sometimes some charts are not covered by these catalogs and you may have to order especially uh, from other catalogs. Uh, I can give you an example is uh, sometimes I used to go to some sports in China where they had special localized charts and you have to order them through the agent sometimes. So that is one example I can give you. There are various scales of charts available and of course you try to always use the uh, large scale charts but sometimes it is not uh, possible to always use large scale charts so depending of course if you are going into pilotage waters you are coasting that is the time that you should be using the largest scale charts sometimes in ocean passages uh, especially that involve uh, transatlantic trans-pacific ocean passages you sometimes use small scale charts um, and then uh, you can see the various scales of charts are mentioned here on the screen and each scale uh, refers to what kind of uh, navigation uh, it refers to or it corresponds to so you can see port approach charts uh, are uh, more mainly larger scale charts and whereas ocean passages charts, charts are smaller scale charts so you can see all that here on your screen so make sure that you always order the right charts always attempt to uh, order the largest scale charts that you can get to because that pretty much outlines the dangers to navigation and all the features of a, a particular ocean area so that the seafarers and the mariners can plan their passages and keep their ships safe all the time. Uh, notices to mariners, uh, I I'm sure you are familiar with it. They are actually published weekly and uh, they are sometimes provided fortnightly by hydrographic offices. Uh, they are available from chart agents. You can order them on the internet. Most of the time your shipping companies will be providing you with it. Uh, you can also order them from hydrographic offices. We have websites available. Uh, well, in my experience, most of the times your companies, your agents supply you with the notice to mariners. Uh, in terms of contents, section one refers to Australian, British Admiralty and New Zealand notices to mariners. Section two refers to the corrections to Admiralty list of lights. Section three is for navigational warning. Section four for hydrographic reports. Section five refers to corrections to all publications listed under Admiralty list of radio signals. And finally, section six refers to corrections to sailing directions. The cumulative notices to mariners are issued for every uh, issued every year, but it comprises of a list of notices for each chart for the past two years. So this is a very useful publication. Actually, sometimes people don't realize how useful it is because sometimes you may join a ship and you realize that some of your charts have not been corrected up to date. And now you're trying to look for the uh, latest, uh, the, the last, uh, correction and you're trying to find out which was the latest correction you're trying to find the gap between there so if you quickly refer to the cumulative notices to mariners that pretty much list out the all the corrections for the last two years and uh, you can track uh, your chart or your publication and how recent it was corrected and after that whatever corrections have been coming out you can chart it easily and then plot it and correct your publications and charts accordingly you also have the annual notices to mariners that provide a summary of the notices to mariners in terms of sailing directions and pilot books, you have uh, um, sailing directions and pilot books for various areas or the ocean ocean areas of the world. So depending on which ocean area you're going to, you may order those books. Many of the companies and many ships sometimes comprises of a, uh, a compilation of a set of a sailing directions. You may they may supply you with all the ocean passages and then ask you to you know then you know you can pretty much pick any one and use it. But sometimes you may have to order some of it specially. Uh, you have other publications such as Ocean Passages of the World, uh, the NP5011 that comprises of all the chart symbols and abbreviations, especially if you are using charts and you are not uh, familiarized with the abbreviations and the symbols that they use, uh, especially for wrecks or some other dangers to navigation, you may refer to this publication and get information out of that. Uh, then you have routing charts and pilot charts available. This is also a very uh, useful uh, chart that you can use for planning the passages because uh, they give you localized information 
and they give you more detailed information about a particular area and that helps you to plan the passage some of this information may be missing from the normal charts uh, which are not focusing on a lot of this information because uh, a chart cannot uh, have all the information on it otherwise it will become very cluttered and it will be very difficult for you to plan a passage or draw courses there and read the information so sometimes you may consult some specialized charts such as routing charts and pilot charts which provide you with detailed information about a particular area you also have the admiralty list of lights and fog signals that provide you with details about the different lights uh, recons uh, boys and lighthouses that you ex uh, encounter during your passage and uh, more detailed information about it because the chart cannot have the detailed information about each of the lights it will have only probably a summarized information if you want to go into the details of it you can go into this publication Similarly, you have the admiralty list of radio signals that comprises of information that are mainly used for GMD purposes. You have the channels information there um, and the other source of information that you may require, uh, like uh, which channel to be monitored, what is the VTS channel, and you have uh, various um, uh, information available. I, I cannot think of all of it um, from the top of my head. Maybe I'll make a separate video on admiralty list of radio signals one day but you can get uh, information from there as well. You have the tide tables to calculate your tides. You have your tidal stream atlases and cold tidal charts to get information about your currents and tidal streams, how it influences uh, your passage, whether it will be in supporting your uh, speed or whether it will be against your ship that will slow down your ship. Then you also have the IMO ships routing book and you have the mariners handbook to get information about weather patterns and weather associated with the passage uh, the seasons associated with the tropical revolving storms or hurricanes or rough seas uh, winds experienced during that area so on and so forth finally you also have the nautical almanac which is published by the british hydrographer it contains astronomical information for celestial navigation but also includes times for sunset sunrise sunset twilights, moonrise, and also contains time zone information for different places. Some of the other publications uh, are listed and some more publications that are to be consulted in the appraisal process could be a guide to port entry. Uh, some of them, some of the people consider this to be an outdated publication, but I feel that uh, you must try and obtain as much information as you can for uh, the ports that you're going into and you never know what uh, useful information that you may find in it. Uh, you have port information booklets which are localized information for local ports normally published by the local agencies supplied by the agents to help you learn more about the local ports and the information regarding it. You have load line charts, uh, distance tables, uh, electronic navigation systems handbook, radio and local warnings, bridge procedures guide and uh, lastly do not forget that your own experience and the owner's experience the agent's experience your uh, peers experience whether senior or junior the crew that you are sailing with uh, also come in handy so make sure that you uh, use all the information that you can from all these publications as well as people and uh, once you gather all the information then do an assessment list out what is important uh, for your passage what pertains to your passage and then plan it accordingly so this was the first video in the series of the videos on passage planning i hope you like it and i will be releasing more videos in the future different parts which will cover different aspects of passage planning like i said it's a big topic i cannot cover everything in one video uh, and if i try to cover everything in one video it will become too long and too boring for you i'll see you soon guys with my next video all the best with your studies